Hey everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, you can hear me now. Yes. Okay, thank you. My name is uh, Yota Mgangire. Um, uh, it's a student at UNISA, University of South Africa. Um, presently, I live in Zimbabwe and that's where I'm making my presentation. And uh, the, connect, the connection that I'm using is not reliable, so you bear with me. I might just disappear for no reason, but please just bear with me. So let's move to the second slide. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, generally, organizations are always faced with uh, information security. Thank you. Uh, organizations are always faced with information security incidents. And as a result, they try to mitigate against these security incidents in many ways, some of which are technical and some would involve, for example, in, in installing uh, endpoint solutions, as an example. Uh, but one of the issues that has been identified in literature is that uh, the, the human being or the human element is very, is very much important in mitigating um, information security incidents in organizations. So in this paper, we are trying to look at um, information uh, um, improved so that we can um, reduce information security incidents in organization. So this paper, we are saying organizations can work to improve the information security of, of their employees. So to be able to do that behavior or to assess it so that they know where, from where they're starting from and to be able to do so, you need a robust and reliable assessment instrument. So for that purpose, this study um, endeavored to develop develop such an instrument and we uh, decided to use um, as a basis the human aspects of information security questionnaire that was alluded, alluded to earlier on by Professor Thompson, I presume, and we combined that with the self slightly different uh, instrument but still uh, being used to assess information security behavior. We can move to the second slide. So the human aspects of information security questionnaire was combined, we combined it with the self-determination theory. So I'll just explain briefly the self-determination theory. Uh, the self-determination theory is um, a group of theories uh, which involves a number of meta theories, one of which is the basic psychological needs theory to develop our questionnaire. So, it states that the need for competence, the need for relatedness, and the need for autonomy um, when an individual uh, fuels the fulfillment of these, they are likely to exhibit intrinsic or to, 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 to be intrinsically motivated. So in this study, we, 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 we define these three components as shown in the slide, competence, where competence is the ability that a person feels in a given uh, area, for example, in this case, information security, the person's uh, perception that they are able to secure their resources, that's competence in this case. Then relatedness is the desire to be connected to others in an organization who feel the need to be connected this is the perception that one is uh, behaving on their own without being influenced or without being uh, given instruction by others. So we, we theorize that when these perceptions, that the perceptions of perception of competence, perception of readiness, and the perception for autonomy comply with the information security pro 
uh, policies or regulations in an organization because they are intrinsically motiv motivated. So in a nutshell, this study is uh, from an intrinsic perspective where we are using the um, self-determination theory to, to, to understand intrinsic motivation. We can move to the second. Um, to develop and to validate an information security behavior questionnaire. And this questionnaire is basically um, based on the self-determination theory where we, we, we think about this aspect of information security behavior. And while we were developing that, we needed to, 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 to collect data. So in the process, we also were able to determine the influence of perceived competence, perceived relatedness, and perceived autonomy on information security behavior. So those were the two aims of this study. We can move to the next slide. So the development of the instrument, like said earlier, involved um, combined themes from the um, focus areas. And these were mapped now to the three concepts of um, competence, relatedness, and autonomy. So these themes are as follows. The, the first, the six, uh, the human aspects of information security question, I think I had uh, six focus area, we added another, one, this is the privacy to come up with seven. So what then happened for each of those uh, focus areas, there are also sub themes under those focus areas. For example, I'll just give an example for the password management, where would we are looking say at part password strength and uh, maybe secu how secure the password is and also maybe sh password sharing and so on. So, Usage would we are looking at um, person based on uh, a lot which comes to email links or so basically those are the the, the is to develop the instrument. So to come up with the questions, we had the sub themes for each of those uh, focus areas mapped to each of competitiveness and autonomy, for example, if we had uh, up with uh, nine questions, three for each of competence, relatedness, and autonomy. Can we move to the next slide? So what then, we ended up having is we ended up having um, password management. We developed this, and then it, it had, um, it used a five scale, a five, scale, a five uh, a little scale which involved uh, strongly disagree, disagree, unsure, agree, and strongly agree. So these were coded as uh, strongly agree as one, disagree two, unsure two, agree four, and strongly. Is that um, each of the sub themes was mapped to, like I said, to competence, relatedness, and autonomy. So we end up with, for example, three questions. For the, for using council. So um, for example, the question would then be the necessary skills to use different passwords for social media and work accounts. For relatedness, the same question would be my colleague, my st statement actually, my colleagues support me to use different passwords for social media and work accounts. Then for autonomy, the same statement would be, I choose to use different passwords for social media and work accounts. So we did that for all the um,
different focused areas and disturb themes for all the seven themes. The biological questions end with a 20 question. We've lost you a bit. Um, are you still there? We've lost you. Yeah, it seems to have dropped out, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, Mel, take over. Ma Malcolm, should I carry on? Yeah, please do. Yes, please okay. do. Can we move to the next slide? So what he conducted was a survey using this questionnaire with a number of um, participants at the university in South Africa. It was online. He obtained the ethical clearance for it and um, rolled out the questionnaire. And we can move to the next slide. So the student used um, SBSS to analyze the data. Um, he specifically did ANOVA tests, t-tests, and Pearson correlation analysis to try and identify if there's any relationship between those three concepts of the self-determination theory. We can then go to the next slide. So in total, 263 people responded to the survey, um, the majority females. The age group um, was majority 1977 to 1995. And the most of the respondents um, had both graduate qualifications, um, this being from institution that um, was a university. And the majority of them then spent six to 10 years um, working at the institution. Also, administrative staff was also um, a large group of the people that participated. We can then go to the next slide. So from the Pearson correlation, the results indicated that competence and autonomy factors had a statistically significant positive correlation. And competence and relatedness factors also showed a positive correlation so did autonomy and relatedness. We can then go to the next slide. So for the questions, um, all of the groups came out positive with a mean score above four, and those for, for the category of the competence, relatedness, and autonomy questions. Um, the only one that had a lower score was the relatedness um, questions. So the relatedness again was related to how the individuals perceived others in terms of their decision making. For the next slide. Uh, the student then conducted an exploratory factor analysis to validate the questionnaire. And this was done separately for each of the three constructs. Um, so each questionnaire with 25 questions and he needed 125 responses for each in order to conduct the factor analysis. We can go to the next slide. So the competence statements resulted in four factors, relatedness in two factors and autonomy in six new factors. Next slide. So this is just a summary of an extract of the factor analysis with the statement numbers and how each of these factors were made up of the new um, grouping of questions with the new names allocated to each of these sets of questions. The next slide. So the Kronbach Alpha was calculated and um, based on the criteria that was set out, um, and all of it was above seven, suggesting a high reliability for the factors. The next slide. So just some of the limitations in the study. Um, it was uh, purpose of sampling used, 
and um, it could be extended to, to a wider population. Also, um, the current questionnaire has 75 questions, which takes a bit long to complete, but it enables the student to validate and to look at the relationships of the self-determination theory and how that could play a role in um, aiding staff to comply to policies. And on the next slide, yes, the conclusion. So the questionnaire can then be used to investigate the perception of competence, relatedness and autonomy, and to design programs focusing on either of these as a priority in an organization. And results suggested that the survey participants were more confident about their competence and autonomy, as opposed to relatedness um, playing a role. And then this can be used then by organizations or a university to identify individual strengths and weaknesses and to further improve awareness and training programs in an institution.